You're watching Fine Print. This is Krishna Kumar and the new Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan attended his first foreign ministry briefing today as he visited Pakistan's foreign ministry office in Islamabad. During his visit, foreign minister and foreign secretary and other relevant officers briefed him. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said that the new government was not shy of engaging with India and had sent positive signals to India right at the beginning. But he reiterated that it was up to India now to take the next steps to take the engagement forward. The foreign Minister said rising Islamophobic and anti-immigrant sentiment was a matter of concern. The briefing comes amidst the standing row between the US and Pakistan diplomats over the press release issued by Washington on Imran Khan's telephonic conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Meanwhile, a video has emerged from Pakistan that shows members of uh, the terror outfit Jesh A. Mohammed openly soliciting funds for quote-unquote jihad in America and India. We all know what jihad for these terrorists is. The video is understood to have been shot in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan. It shows a group of men holding up a white sheet of cloth and collecting money at a venue for Eid prayers. These men are reportedly part of the Al Rahmat Trust and Jaish e Muhammad. But both of these organizations are banned. The Al Rahmat Trust is considered as a front for Jaish e Muhammad's activities. Back in 2010, the United States had said that the trust provided support for terrorist activities in Pakistan and Afghanistan. It has also been involved in fundraising for the Masood Azhar-led terror outfit. Imran Khan's party, the Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf, has returned to power in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province in the recently held elections. This video comes at a time when the Financial Action Task Force, or the FATF, the UN's terror financing watchdog, has listed Pakistan on the grey list. Pakistan has to comply with FATF guidelines to curb funding to groups like the lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed in order to be removed from that list. Now the Hajj pilgrimage could emerge as the new source of revenue for Saudi Arabia. With fluctuating oil prices under dip in the kingdom's earnings from oil, Saudi Arabia now aims to focus on the pilgrimage. According to the Vision 2030 unveiled by the new Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the kingdom is now looking to boost its non-oil economy with pilgrimages at the center of it all. The country has announced the plans to set up a development company that will add 115 new buildings, 70,000 hotel rooms, 9,000 housing units and 3.6 lakh square meters of commercial space to increase the capacity for pilgrims. Saudi Arabia hopes to welcome 30 million pilgrims annually by the year 2030. The pilgrimage industry is Saudi Arabia's second most important one after oil and gas. Around 54 million people have attended the Hajj over the past 25 years. Two million pilgrims attended the Hajj this year. 21,000 buses were deployed to ferry pilgrims, while 14,000 international and domestic flights were in operation. To add to this, 8 million copies of the Quran have been distributed. Many luxury hotels have sprung up in Mecca, with some offering suites as expensive as nearly $6,000 a night. Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage contributes around $12 billion a year to the country's GDP. This is about 20% uh, of Saudi Arabia's non-oil GDP. According to experts, by 2022, the revenue from pilgrimages will top $150 billion. Remember, the country's economy is heavily dependent on oil. The sector accounts for nearly 87% of the budget revenues and contributes 42% to the Saudi GDP. However, given the fluctuations in oil prices, the kingdom hopes that the newly laid plan will help it battle the situation in the future. Now, Scott Morrison has been sworn in as Australia's next Prime Minister after Malcolm Turnbull was ousted by party rivals in a coup. The country's uh, governing Liberal Party was facing a long-drawn struggle for power ahead of elections in May next year and Turnbull 
was forced out of leadership as members of his own party called for a fresh ballot. 50-year-old Morrison, who till now held the post of treasurer, won an internal ballot 45-40 over former Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton. Our plan, my plan for this country, is for an even stronger Australia. To keep our economy strong, to guarantee the essentials that Australians rely on. To keep Australians safe from terrorism and all the way to bullying in our schools. To keep our country together. To not pit one group of Australians against another. To ensure that one can succeed and all can succeed. That one doesn't have to fail for another one to succeed. We have a lot of challenges as a country and we will get through them as we always have, together. Malcolm Turnbull announced his resignation in a press briefing and said that uh, there was an insurgency from within the party and the media. He has further confirmed that he will resign from parliament, leaving the government's one-seat majority at risk. Well, 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 Phil, it's obvious, you know, if you're this, you know, the Australians will be just dumbstruck and so appalled by the conduct uh, of the last week. Um, you know, to, to imagine that a government would be rocked by this sort of disloyalty and deliberate uh, you know, uh, insurgency is the best way to describe it, deliberate destructive action. Uh, at a time when, you know, the, there are differences on policy, but frankly, all of them were uh, sort of result, you know, able to be resolved with a little bit of goodwill. The socially conservative Morrison will be Australia's sixth prime minister in a span of just 10 years. This is a continuation of a pattern. Not a single Australian prime minister has completed a full term in more than a decade. For the record, Morrison is Australia's 30th Prime Minister, but the question is how long before Australia gets yet another PM? In the last few weeks, Australians have watched in dismay as normal government business was suspended to settle a political feud. The next election is due in May 2019, and Scott Morrison's biggest challenge will be convincing the electorate that he should stay in power. If Australians don't have faith in him, the country could have a new Prime Minister again in June next year.